Hey folks, welcome to Fitness at Home. I'm Clint Grimes, where I urge you to work out at home so you can control cost, convenience, and consistency of your workouts. And today, we're going to be talking about how to get low body fat over 50. And uh, guess what? Yeah, I'm over 50. Um, I usually put product links in the descriptions of my videos. There's nothing I'm selling today. I'm not selling a doggone thing, not trying to sell you anything, uh, but you're going to get plenty of information, and that's what I want you to have. So sit back, listen. If you can't go through this whole thing in one shot, go through what you can. Come back and listen to the rest because you're going to need all this information. So um, I was always pretty muscular, pretty big. I've been retired for two years from law enforcement when I was working uh, I was walking around on 190, 200 pounds uh, for a guy that's 5'9", and that was pretty big. Um, but I was kind of smooth, um, not chiseled. Um, about 10 years ago, I discovered HIIT cardio, uh, Tabata interval, inter, uh, intervals, excuse me, started doing that. That got me a, a little bit smaller, but I was still smooth, and I knew the problem had to be my meal plan because I really wanted that chiseled look. I wanted to be lighter, easier to move around. So um, I had been through a few meal plans to get me that way. None of them ever did. But the only thing that has ever done it uh, has been intermittent fasting. And so in 2018, I started looking into intermittent fasting. And here I am a little bit more than a year later. Uh, at 59 years old, no no lie, 59 years old, 9 to 11% body fat. I would have done this with my shirt off, but my wife, wife won't let me, so I didn't take my shirt off. But yeah, 9 to 11% body fat, 5'9", and I'm walking around at 171 to 174 pounds. So you can put that any, in any calculator you want, and that's what you're going to get. Okay, so um, I knew... It had to be my meal plan. Um, I, w I wanted to get ripped. I wanted to look into intermittent fasting, so I did. And uh, so I'm going to tell you exactly what I did, exactly what I did to get to where I am now. I want to say that I'm not any smarter than you. I'm certainly not better looking, but uh, this is what I did. It worked for me, and I'm sharing it with you, okay? so. Uh, why will this work? And uh, the big uh, methods of intermittent fasting, the, the two biggest methods are based on a 16-hour fasting window, or fasting window, an eight-hour eating window. That's the prob probably the simplest form, and it's highly effective for several reasons. Uh, number one, it's harder for you to eat as much food in an eight-hour window than a 10, 12, or 14-hour window which most people, pre, uh, most people eat in uh, without thinking, okay? Number two, if you're now eating the same amount in meals, uh, snacks in a shorter period, you're gonna feel fuller and not wanna eat as much. And it's gonna, you're gonna find it pretty, pretty difficult to eat that same amount because your feeding window is so much shorter and you, you are, now you're paying attention to not eating inside that window when you weren't paying attention before. And number three, the I word, insulin. Insulin is the substance that allows your body to digest carbohydrates. And with a normal eating pattern, your insulin level never drops low enough to stop you from burning carbohydrates. But with a 16-hour fasting period, your insulin level drops low enough that your body no longer can digest carbohydrates and it leaves it to digest fat. So... That being said, here are the exact steps I took. Exactly, okay? Step one, pick the plan that suits you. And for most people, the most common plan is the 16, 8 to 16 hour uh, fast, eight hour feast plan uh, in which you eat normal meals, for most people, three a day in an eight hour window. I didn't choose that. I chose the two meal a day plan um, for two reasons. Number one, it's simple, and I'm a very <laughs> simple guy. I like simple. And two, it's easier for me to track 
It's ideal for somebody like me that has a busy lifestyle, who only has time to sit down to eat a meal twice a day. Um, and it's also be based on the eight hour feeding window. Okay, so um, that is step one. And, it, uh, and in step one, there's one more thing that you gotta do. You need to calculate your calorie intake. So what I recommend that you do to do that is download my fitness plan from Armor, Under Armour. Um, it is an excellent calorie calculator. There are others, but I recommend that one. And this app allows you to load in your height, your weight, your age, your activity level, your goal weight, and how fast you want to get there. And then it's going to calculate your daily calorie intake. And after every meal, you're going to enter your food. It's pretty easy. It recognizes the names and brands of your food. It recognizes restaurants. So if you say a Subway sandwich or whatever, it knows what a Subway sandwich is. And it immediately starts memorizing the foods that you frequently eat. So after about a week, you can start add, using what's called the multi-add feature to make your meal entries really quick. And all you'll need to do is check off the food on your list and touch multi-add and boom, it'll add a whole meal. And it will it takes me less than a minute to uh, put a meal in my fitness pal. So you need to do that. And one warning about my pit fitness pal is it's going to subtract off the amount of calories of your activities and indicate that you have X amount of calories remaining to reach your goal um, for your net calorie intake, which will indicate to you, well, heck, now that I've done this exercise, I can eat more. Ignore that. Ignore that. Just eat what your normally your normal calorie intake is, what it says for you to eat, regardless of how much uh, activity you have. Okay. Okay. Step number two. You need to choose a food list. Okay. So, even though you're using the mechanism of fasting slash insulin, you need to eat good, nutritious food. So, there are some fantastic resources. Uh, that have nutritious food lists. I'm going to make you a few recommendations. The first recommendation is Healthline that has an excellent list of super healthy foods that you can choose from. Um, I will put the link to Healthline in the description. Uh, it has a list of 50 super healthy foods. Uh, another great food list comes from eatthis.com. You might recognize them as the producers of the Eat This Not That magazine. They have an outstanding list of 100 healthy foods uh, ranged by category, uh, fruits, nuts, berries, vegetables, meats, etc. And I'll put that in the link down there too so you can use that list. And uh, last but not least, there's a list that comes along with the Sava 60 supplement and meal plan, which is only available from the Sava Corporation. Um, their eating plan is not an IF plan, but the food choices are outstanding. And so that's uh, a list of healthy foods. And uh, you're probably thinking, what about beverages? For me, I drank water. I still drink water every meal. Um, during the 16 hour fasting period, you, will, you may not drink any beverages that have calories at all because you are fasting. So if you're a coffee or a tea drinker, drink away but no cream, um, no sweetener, and like I said, the best thing to do is just drink water to keep yourself hydrated, and that fills your stomach too. As far as the meals go, like I said, I was on two meals. The first day is my big meal. Uh, first meal, excuse me, it's about 60 to 62% of my calorie intake. I load up on carbs that first meal of the day, in the form of oatmeal and whole grain bread, um, which is a great source of fiber that makes you feel full. Um, I also have uh, eggs with bacon bits in it as a protein, and I also have a protein shake with my breakfast. Plenty of protein, great for your muscle mass, but also the protein acts as an appetite suppressant. Um, so I'm gonna leave a copy of my breakfast in that description down below, uh, well, that'll be there too. Uh, my dinner, which is around uh, three-eighths, uh, around 40% uh, of 
I guess 38 percent of my calorie intake uh, is eaten in the proportions of the Harvard Healthy Plate. And again, I'll leave a link to that down there so you can see what that looked like. Um, the uh, Saba 60 Plate Map uh, from the Saba Corporation is very similar. Um, basically, your lunch and dinner consists of one half fruits and vegetables, one quarter carbo, excuse me, yeah, one quarter carbohydrates, one quarter lean protein. Um, everybody's calorie intake is going to be a little bit different and it'll take you a, uh, a day or two to adjust the proportions to find out uh, what it's going to be. But trust me, uh, I guess the amounts and not the proportions, trust me, you're going to find it hard to reach your calorie goal uh, for the day. It's a good thing. And I'm going to leave a copy of my typical dinner down there in the description too so you can see that. Step three, choosing a feeding window, a feeding period. And this is going to be a lot easier than you think. All you got to do is think about how you eat right now. Are you normally a breakfast skipper, um, a late first meal eater? Well, then you may want to eat your first meal at 11 or 12, right? And then that would put your last meal at 7 or 8 in the evening. And that might seem a little late to you, but think about it. Your next meal won't be till 11 a.m. or noon the next day. So um, that'll work out fine. If you're an early riser that has to eat breakfast at 8 o'clock, that's fine too. Start your feeding window, window then, and then your uh, feeding window, window will end around 8 p.m., okay? Um, you may be worried about late night snacking, but uh, if you get to your calorie quota uh, for the day, you will be stuffed by the evening. You'll feel stuffed. And, uh, of course, you can adjust this feeding window if it comes up. Um, if something comes up, but try to keep it consistent. Step four, step four, uh, the last step, executing your plan. Well, I've told you exactly what I did. So now it's time to put this plan into practice. There's nothing left to do for you, but just to do it. And you're going to be surprised how rapidly you'll adjust to eating in an eight hour window. And you'll be even more surprised that you're not going to be hungry. But before you start, do yourself a favor. I want you to take your scale and stick it in your closet, okay? Don't hop on it every day. Why? Because we are going to be measuring body fat and not weight. Body fat and not weight. And to do that, we're going to use the U.S. Navy body fat calculator. And I'm going to leave a link to that down here, too, so you could get that. Now... Once a week, you are going to pull out your scale, but only for the purposes of getting a number to put in the entry for the body fat calculator. You're also going to need a waist and neck measurement, and ladies, you're going to need a hip measurement. You're going to put all those numbers in the body fat calculator, and it's going to give you your percent body fat. And once you get it, you don't have to tell anybody the number. That's just for you. That number is for you to watch and watch that number get smaller every week. Okay, now, if you found this video helpful, this information helpful to you, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can be notified of future videos, comment below, and share with your friends on social media. That's it. That's all. Kind of wordy, but I wanted you to have the information. See you next time. Bye.